Send in the rank and file because it's time to hold the battle line. Today we're talking the best troops for every faction in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're talking troops, your standard warriors who march to war in Warhammer 40k, often perhaps not the very most exciting models on the table, but kind of important to have along to make an army feel like a well-rounded army, and do the grunt work, objectives holding and dying, while the fancy elites and heavy guns do their thing. In today's video we'll be going through every faction in the game that has a troops choice, talking about which of their options I think is strongest right now and why, and roughly how I think about fielding them in game. To start off though, let's just talk generally about troops in 9th edition for a second, and Games Workshop have I think put them in a fairly interesting place. There's really a whole benefit to bringing troops along, but they don't tend to be the best damage dealers, not compared with elite troops or heavy weapons. First up, troops are generally needed if you want to fill patrol or battalion detachments, the one that gain you command points, and that can easily mean even if your troops aren't particularly strong, it could be worth bringing a squad or two along, as it gets you a whole load of CP and the powerful options that that brings. Troops generally get the objective secured special rule, really nice for primaries in 9th edition, even if the enemy might have all sorts of horrors on the objective, if you can just keep a few troops clinging to life on the objective, then you'll take it over the opponent, and that's really important for 9th edition primary objectives. Next, troops generally tend to be fairly durable for the cost, and relatively cheap compared with the rest of the army, so they can be a bit more expendable. As they're not generally paying for massive damage output, it means that they should take a bit more effort to gun down, again making them good for holding objectives, and they can often just do more expendable roles, things like screening out the enemy, actions, or being sacrificial units to descend to their deaths in place of your more important units. As troops are some of the archetypical models for each faction, they're typically core units, and ones that can make good use of all the buffs that your codex brings. Things like character auras, sub-faction bonuses, and stratagems will generally be quite easily usable by troops, and sometimes that does mean even with slightly mediocre damage output, you can still make them into something scary. A bit of investment does have the potential to go quite a long way. Finally, for the good stuff, troops can be spammed without consequence. Most other choices you can only take a certain amount, usually three data slates of each type in match play 2000 point games, but because troops are so ubiquitous, it means that you can take as many as you want, and you can basically spam entire armies of them if you want to. Generally though, for all those good advantages, as I said, their damage output doesn't tend to be that great, at least not compared with the elite heavy hitters. So in general, I think the Games Workshop kind of pushes you towards taking some troops to get all the benefits that we just talked about, but not to go crazy and fill out an entire army worth of troops, as you actually do need a bunch of exciting heavy hitter units to try and destroy the opponent's army as quickly as possible. Just in general, I'd say that most armies will field at least some troops, but not loads, and at least in more optimised lists, it's really common to be fielding just the minimum amount of each squad of troops, so say 5-man space marine squads, or 10 strong units of demonettes, as generally that goes quite well with them being expendable threats to do one specific job. If, for example, you're just holding down an objective or screening out enemy movement, there's not so much point in investing beyond the minimum. Obviously a fair few exceptions exist though. Some armies can get on fine without any troops whatsoever, and some troops can be really nice damage dealers in their own right. Let's talk through them though, and we'll go through the factions one by one, starting with the Imperium, then moving forward to Chaos and Xenos. So first up, for the Imperium we have the Space Marines. I did make an entire focus video on Space Marine troops choices, and which ones see the most play in competitive, and generally the most common selection was just standard Space Marine intercessors, though incursors and infiltrators saw an awful lot of play as well. There's definitely a lot to like about the standard intercessor squad, their standard guys have the best damage output out of the troop slot per point, they're really quite tough for the points, and have transhuman physiology to make them more resistant to heavy fire, Put out a decent amount of anti-infantry fire with auto bolt rifles, which seems to be the most popular selection, and can mix it up and melee a bit too. I might be tempted to put some regular bolt rifles in there if you're playing ultramarines with their move and double tap rule, but just in general a squad or two of these seems really quite hard to go wrong with. Otherwise I'd say that more space marine lists than don't use at least one or two units of incursors or infiltrators, basically paying a few points over the intercessors for the powerful option of forward deploying towards the enemy. That means that you can be getting on midfield objectives, maybe doing actions and things right from the get-go, and infiltrators in particular can screen out enemy deep strike, sometimes even making them a decent choice for holding home field objectives to stop the enemy getting in from reserves and charging you. Both very very strong options there. Otherwise, played a little bit less, but still fairly decent I think, are assault and heavy intercessors. 
Assault Intercessors will have more value in the chapters with close combat benefits, things like White Scars or Blood Angels maybe, plus they're really quite cheap and are able to fight twice, though the standard Intercessors do seem to be taken a bit more. Heavy Intercessors I think have really quite good numbers per model and per point invested, they seem to be a bit tougher than the standard Intercessors per point, but maybe a little bit less threatening for damage output. I think perhaps the main issue with them is that just per unit they're a little bit on the pricey side, you have to spend 140 points if you want to have a unit holding down a backfield objective, which that might have been done just as well by a standard squad of intercessors that you can get just for 100 points. Finally, the tactical marines really don't seem to be taken all that much in stronger lists. They are a bit cheaper than intercessors, which would usually be a good thing, but they lack transhuman physiology, and their bolters are just significantly less damage output. Upgrading to the auto bolt rifle over the standard bolter seems to be a bit of a no-brainer for a couple of points. I'd say perhaps the biggest thing to sell tactical marines are the heavy and special weapons that they can take. Perhaps for a different sort of objective camping squad, you could have a unit with a grav cannon perhaps. That's very cheap and quite generalist firepower, though the unit is punished a fair bit more for moving. Overall though, I'd generally be looking to intercessors, incursors and infiltrators for the majority of marine troops. The other things are usable, just maybe a tiny bit more niche. Briefly talking through the space marine chapters now. And different chapter tactics and doctrines can really push you in the way of taking one of the choices over the others. Ultramarines really quite like their rapid fire and heavy weapons, as they're able to move and shoot with them normally whenever they're in the tactical doctrine. White Scars really like assault weapons and assault intercessors. They really get on well with the auto bolt rifle intercessors. Having a squad that can move, advance, shoot normally and then charge normally gives you some massive speed and massive threat. Iron Hands get to move normally and get some rerolls with their heavy weapons turn 1. That can be quite nice for tactical marines or things like stalker bolt rifle intercessors. And I think their feel no pain is really quite nice on things like infiltrators and incursors who really just want to be clean to life as much as possible on those midfield objectives. Raven Guard I think generally work quite well with most of the choices and maybe a bit better with the longer range type options as their chapter tactic does reward sitting back and being harder to hit. Salamanders maybe have a touch more synergy with the heavy intercessors. I feel like Salamanders might be one of the stronger armies for massed Gravis armour. They really like their Flamestorm aggressors and the Eradicators. You could try and overload the enemy with mass toughness 5 bodies. They maybe are a bit better with the tactical squad as well, getting that single reroll is really nice on a heavy weapon, and of course they love their multi-melters. The Imperial Fists get on well with basically any of the troops. They like anything with a bolter. In particular, might have a tiny bit more synergy with the things with low AP, like the auto bolt rifles, as getting to ignore light cover with them is quite a big deal. Again, Black Templars get on quite well with anything with 3 plus power armour. They can get them a 5 plus invul save and a mini sort of transhuman effect with their vow. And they do have their own regular and primaris crusader squads to consider now, both of which are kind of interesting, but I'm not personally convinced they're going to be quite as strong as their more elite damage dealer equivalents. You can get truly massive units of space marines, up to 20, which could be quite good for some focused buffs but I still kind of feel it might be stronger just to use those same buffs on things like Vanguard Veterans, Assault Terminators or Blade Guards, and just keep troops for holding objectives in a bit more of their traditional role. It'll be very cool to see if anyone does manage to make them work though. Dark Angels in stronger lists often tend to be incredibly troops light these days. They get their own special Deathwing and Ravenwing detachments, which means they can get the command point refund from them, and also get Deathwing and Ravenwing bikes being obsec. In general, that really does cover a lot of the bases that troops would traditionally fill. Deathwing Terminators are ridiculously tough, and the bikes are incredibly fast-moving, and that's nice to have Obsec on. If you are playing with some more standard Greenwing Dark Angels, though, anything that stands still will certainly benefit from their chapter tactic, so anything with a decent range that doesn't need to move too much is generally going to be okay. Space Wolves have their own interesting troops options in Blood Claws and Grey Hunters, both of which I'd say are decently superior to Tactical Marines, Blood Claws are kind of like Assault Intercessors on the cheap, hitting as hard on the charge but for only 18 points, and Grey Hunters can quite interestingly combine a Chainsword and a Bolter. I think both of them are solid enough, competing well with the Intercessors and Assault Intercessors, though I think that Space Wolves get quite a lot of value out of the Phobos troops too. Blood Angels I feel kind of similarly, most options work well, with the Primaris options being particularly good at mixing it up in close combat, even if you're not taking the Assault variants. Getting plus one to wound really allows them to punch up against targets that they shouldn't be quite as threatening against. And I feel that in particular, incursors are quite a good fit with Blood Angels. Getting that extra little bit of AP makes them a fairly dangerous midfield threat, as well as doing their fairly standard objective things. Finally, Death Watch of course have their many and varied kill teams. And out of these, I'd argue that the Proteus kill team and the standard Death Watch veterans are probably the strongest. 
There's so many options that these guys can take, including really interesting things like lightning claws, storm shields, and the special issue bolt guns. One of the most common builds seems to be a team of veterans with either shotguns or bolters to keep them fairly cheap, and then have the other half of the kill team combat squad and have that made up entirely of bikes and van vets. That gives you really quite a fast and melee threatening objective secured unit, and the bikes all get the infantry keyword as well, so get to ghost through ruined walls. The Spectrus kill team I think is pretty interesting too, you have to pay for some infiltrators, but then you could have a seriously big eliminator squad if you wanted, or maybe do some interesting things with like mixing in, say, one infiltrator and one reaver into the second squad, which gives them a lot of benefits. And there's plenty of other options out there, including drop podding frag cannons, obsec outriders, or hidden eradicators behind some heavy intercessors. Still though, the Proteus one does seem to be the one that's most played. Moving on to the Custodies next. And they've only got the one Codex Troops choice, but another two in their extensive Forge World range. Out of these three, I'd say that the ones to look at really are the Custodian Guard and the Sagittarum Custodians. For the regular Custodian Guard, I think that the thing that differentiates them is their Storm Shields. The whole Custodies army gets Obsec, but these are some of the toughest models in the whole army, and to be honest, in the game of 40k in general, getting a rare 3+, plus invul save that's not really all that common these days. I think a couple of relatively cheap units going towards the midfield objectives is rarely going to be too bad a choice. If there's anything that's going to be taking fire from the enemy, it may as well be insanely durable custodians with a 3 plus invul. Otherwise, I think that the Sagittarum custodians are a really good choice for holding down home field objectives. Their nice bolt casters can put down a bit of very accurate supporting fire, while also being toughness 5 infantry with 2 plus saves holding the objectives, and of course they really get on with any light cover that they can get. They're really not even all that bad in melee as well, if you can take a Misericordia along, they should still make a very nasty mess of light infantry. Generally though, I'd say that Custodies with Spears aren't quite as strong as the alternatives at the moment, either the regular Custodian Guard, or the Forge World Alternative Troops with the Adracite or Pyrethite Spears. Those guys are a bit more expensive for a model with less durability. A few Melter Shots are kind of nice, but I wouldn't give up the Storm Shields for them. Next up we come to the Sisters, who only recently acquired a second troops choice, I'd say that between the two, they're quite balanced. The regular Battle Sisters clock in at 11 points per model, very cheap small units at 55 points, great for screening, obsec, and doing actions. I'd say most lists tend to use a few minimum sized squads, just literally for expendable units and to fill out those important detachments for the command points. Though you can play them in a few different ways, you could have them with multi-melters in Argent Shroud running around very quickly, or build up some very big meaty blocks of Sisters, for 20 models and then layer some damage and durability buffs on them. They can get transhuman and better bolter fire and do quite well with some of the war hymns as well, and really can make themselves a fairly pricey, if problematic, unit to shift. In general though, I think most lists will tend to usually use a few minimal units of them and more focus on the sisters' excellent elites choices, rather than investing too heavily in the rank and file. The sisters' novitiate, on the other hand, are a bit of a different option, and I'd say a fairly powerful one for Bloody Rose in particular. 75 points for 10 sisters in carapace armour, quite cheap for 10 obsec bodies, and their durability per point is fairly similar to the standard sisters. In particular though, they can actually be a very decent melee threat in their own right, in Bloody Rose packing 40 strength 4 attacks on the charge, all at AP-1. That could easily clear out a light infantry squad or two, or even punch up against some space marines. The main restriction on them is that you can only take one of these per every regular battle sister squad that you have in the army, so it does mean that they're never going to be spammed too much. However, I do think that one squad of these for every one Bloody Rose sister squad that you've got really doesn't seem like the worst investment. Next up we have the Grey Knights, where their two troops choices I really don't think are anywhere near as balanced. Strike Marines cost 22 points per model, and Terminators cost 42. The main problem being that you don't really get double the utility out of the Terminators that you do with the Strike Marines. Strike squads are just brutally efficient on raw stats, and really compare well with the other faction's troops choices. They feel far more like an elite's choice that gives you some all out great damage. They're at least relatively durable, with only a couple of points more than a Space Marine Intercessor for basically the same defensive profile. And then they have a massive triple threat on the damage dealing, decent light infantry killing fire with that Storm Bolter, 3 Strength 5 AP-3 damage 2 attacks with their 4 swords which you can swap for halberds if you want. And then you've got a psychic power, it could easily just be smite for yet more mortal wound damage, or you could have those melee attacks reroll wound rolls, and that makes them some of the most dangerous damage dealers in 40k full stop. I'd say their main issue is actually delivering them into a place where they can do all that damage. They work quite well with rhinos, they can certainly just teleport onto the board, 
though I'd say they do face some fairly hefty competition from interceptors who work very similarly but move much faster. On the other hand, I do think that the Terminators struggle to compete with the Strike Marines. They're almost double the price. I'd say their durability isn't quite twice as good. It's good against small arms, but heavy weapons might kill a Terminator just as easily. The amount of shots that they can get is very similar, though Terminators do have the advantage of being able to move and shoot up to 24 inches with bolter discipline, and the melee part is perhaps the most underwhelming. As for double the cost, you're going to be punching with the exact same profile as the Strike Marine. I'd say maybe their main advantage is getting a really big squad to layer durability buffs and things on them, though I think for most grey light lists, they are generally going to go with the strikes over the Terminators. Moving on, we come to the Astra Militarum, and out of the three troops choices on offer, I prefer the infantry squads and scion squads over the conscripts. Infantry squads are very cheap and effective objective grabbers and screening units, 55 points for the 10 models, and they actually have a fairly decent profile for models of that points cost. Some orders from a cheap company commander can really take them to the next level. Move, 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 zooming them across the board as fast as jet bikes, exactly what you want on obsec units, and potentially having a very nasty sting against light infantry with first rank fire, second rank fire, which can now be applied to a whole bunch of units from a single order. They're quite a flexible unit with multiple different ways to play them as well. They can be potentially quite decent in melee with Kaschan, Strachan and Priests. They can go in chimeras that are also very cheap and durable for a mobile objective grabbing threat and can potentially bring a couple of very cheap special weapons like plasma guns to have a bit more damage punch against things like space marines. Overall, I think they're really useful to have holding the battle line and jumping around to contest primaries and I think most guard lists will certainly want to bring a few. Scions have a completely different role, being a lot more expensive per model but it's quite nice to have some incredibly cheap units that can just drop down and do things like actions or even do some surprise charges onto primary objectives and take them away from your opponent. They're really nice cheap utility units for just 45 points, and you can equip them for doing a bit of damage too. Certain Scion regiments can make mass hotshot las guns really effective indeed, and you can equip them with special weapons to put some hefty damage on some hard targets, though I think that that is generally done a bit better by the Scion command squads, who can really spam them to the max. I'm not sure that going too overboard on Scions is a good idea, but a few inside a guard list isn't a bad thing. Conscripts, I'd say, are perhaps a bit more niche. They're a tiny bit cheaper than infantry squads, but only hit on fives, so you're really sacrificing loads of damage output. I'd say their main advantage is when all you want is bodies to hold the line. The big units can make some really good use of durability buffs, things like go to ground or astropaths plus one to their save, and they're particularly interesting in Cadians, as they can guarantee orders to go off on them, such as move, 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 to get those annoying bodies where they need to be. With such low leadership, though, morale is usually going to be an issue. You can't rely on them to do any significant damage to all but the lightest of infantry, and at least points per model they aren't really that much cheaper than infantry squads. I think they definitely have a niche, but again maybe not one to go absolutely overboard on. Next up we come to the Admech, and if I had to choose one selection I'd go for Skatari Rangers perhaps being the most interesting troops choice, though Vanguard not being all that far behind at all. They both recently got a small points bump going from 8 points up to 9 points, but they still seem very reasonable at that points cost, particularly with the sheer amount of buffs and synergy that you can put on them within the Admech Codex. I'd say I have a slight preference for Rangers for main damage dealer units. Strength 4 and AP-1 and tons of shots really goes quite a long way, and their Galvanic Volley Fire stratagem still is pretty useful, getting up to an extra 20 shots for just a couple of CP. Still getting 2 Strength 4 AP-1 shots for just 9 points is very good indeed, and they've got access to a whole ton of buffs, including things like their Doctrinas, very cheap rerolls from Marshalls, better APM range from a Manipulus, and multiple stacking durability layers as well, such as Lucius with their transhuman physiology and the Logi to ignore AP-1 and 2. All around still an excellent troops choice, can be decently tough and good damage dealers as well. Vanguard I'd say are on a very very similar level, and often the better choice for any units that you want to be advancing into the midfield. Their firepower is significantly better against light infantry, though maybe not quite as general purpose. Their stratagem did get heavily nerfed, so it's nowhere near as useful as it was previously. And I'd actually say one of the main attractions to using Vanguard is the rad saturation rule. It can make them actually surprisingly hard to shift with light infantry in combat. Space Marines only wounding on them on fours means they aren't quite as easy to kill as rangers. Again, an absolutely excellent unit. Despite the points increases, I still think that both of these are a bit better than the Catafron options. They both have okay firepower and damage, and are fairly tough meaty units, but without core, they're locked out of a lot of the buffs that make Admech great, and if you're just looking for raw firepower, they're competing with the other very good guns in the decks. 
After the two, I prefer the Breachers. They're quite a nice unit that doesn't require all that much support, and just trundle up towards the midfield objectives, and actually be a surprisingly hefty counterpunch in melee. Their Hydraulic Claws doing some serious work against hard targets. The Destroyers are okay, but I'd say their firepower isn't quite a standout compared with the other options. And Ballistic Skill 4 Plus can be a bit of a liability, particularly on any boards that have dense cover. Leaving the Imperium behind now, and we're getting into the realms of Chaos. For Chaos Demons, I'd rank Nurglings as perhaps the strongest pick, though I think that all the other lesser demons can have a role. For 22 point swarms, they can be surprisingly hard to shift, either just with their mass wounds against heavy weapons, or they're disgustingly resilient against small arms. A few cheap units of these starting on midfield objectives isn't the worst idea, and I think they'll usually take more effort for the opponent to scrape them off compared with how many points they cost. Otherwise, demonettes are fast and fairly threatening light infantry killers, perhaps most relevant out of any of the lesser demons, as they're the ones that allow you to fill Slaneshi patrols and battalions. You'd want to fill them all out with Slaanesh demons so they can get their advance and charge from their loci, and they're also the easiest way to spam multiple Keepers of Secrets, which are perhaps one of the strongest Slaanesh datasheets. Plaguebearers, I'd say, are perhaps the ones that are most struggling for a role right now. Out of the troops, they are probably the toughest objective campers, but they might compete with just taking more Nurglings that do have the option of setting up forward, or even just things like Beats of Nurgle, which are just ridiculously tough in their own right. Bloodletters are very fragile once they're on the board, but they're quite nice for some seriously powerful Deep Strike Bomb-type units, if you upgrade them with their command point Banner of Blood, they'll get a 3d6 inch charge out of Deep Strike, very reliably getting them into combat. Finally, Horrors again really like to Deep Strike in. You can jump down some seriously big units of Horrors with Flickering Fire, have them next to a Change Caster for the extra plus one strength, and maybe even amp up their shooting even more with the Psychic Power. They're a bit harder to shift when they're shot back in return with their 4 plus invul saves, and do have the potential to do some annoying things with Split as well, to make them harder to shift than you might expect in return. Next up for standard Chaos Marines. Unfortunately, Games Workshop hasn't really given Chaos players all that much of an incentive to actually play their actual Chaos Space Marines, as a lot of the stronger Chaos Space Marine lists do tend to use Cultists instead. At just 5 points, they're very cheap for doing objectives and actions, and let you dedicate the points to the heavier hitters. Tide of Traitors can be a really powerful stratagem as well, allowing you to regenerate some dead models, and also get some much needed mobility around the board, maybe going into other quarters to do actions and things, or threaten charges on backfield units that would not like to get charged by cultists. The standard Chaos Marines for 14 points per model and their single wounds just don't really compete that well in my opinion. Cultists do objective holding better, other choices do damage dealing better, they really are a choice that need their second wound, or just need to be a fair bit cheaper. You potentially can make some big squads of them for layered buffs, but I feel like that sort of thing is usually going to be better done on things like Possessed or Terminators. Finally, Emperor's Children and World Eaters both can get their Cult Marines as troops choices, Norse Marines in particular being really quite a powerful shooting synergy unit, and it's not too bad to get Obsec on them as well. You can potentially get them into position with a Dreadclaw Drop Pod, or maybe even Warp Time, and then just stack as many Chaos Shooting buffs on them as possible, things like Prescience, Veterans of the Long War, any rerolls that are going, and then have them fire those powerful sonic weapons twice with endless cacophony. They do a fair bit of damage, though aren't really all that great at taking a punch in return. Otherwise, for World Eaters, packing a whole bunch of Berserkers into Rhinos, and charging forward to let the galaxy burn, it's certainly a very fluffy way of playing Chaos Space Marines, and they'll certainly be liking it a lot more now they get Death to the False Emperor against everything. Though still, I think the main issue for Berserkers isn't the amount of damage that they do, it's more that they're a little bit pricey and easy to kill in return. Next up we come to the Death Guard, and again it's a case of the minions outshining the standard marines, with Poxwalkers just being so much better than Plague Marines in my opinion. For 5 points, Poxwalkers are just a god tier chaff unit that has the potential to turn killer with a stratagem, and drag down the enemy's most elite infantry under a hail of mortal wounds. For just 5 points per model, for toughness 4 and a 6 plus feel no pain and fearless, they're absolutely great for holding down objectives defensive wise, or just being nice expendable screens. Their Mortal Wound stratagem for 1 command point might kill a couple of Pox Walkers, but particularly if you combine it with the Harbinger's option to re-roll hit rolls, a max squad could easily be doing in excess of 10 Mortal Wounds, more than enough to drag down a lot of enemy elite infantry. They can get further buffs from the Terminus S Strike Force stratagems, things like moving a bit faster and regenerating depleted squads, and you generally can build Death Guard lists around them, taking one unit for every single core Death Guard unit that you have on the board. Next up, for Plague Marines, I'd certainly say that they're not a bad unit, they're just kind of outshone by their excellent chaff. 
They really are pretty durable, toughness 5 and minus 1 damage, but I'd say that they maybe just lack for a little bit of a role within the codex, being maybe not quite as good at taking objectives as Poxwalker Swarms, but just not having durability and damage on the same level as the Terminators. In general, I feel that quite a lot of Death Guard lists tend to go for more Terminators and Poxwalkers, as opposed to the more mid-roll of Plague Marines, though I really don't think that they're all that far behind, just perhaps suffering from being a little bit more generalist than either specialised option. Finally, Death Guard Cultists are just incredibly overshadowed by Poxwalkers. For the points for the actual models that you get, there really isn't that much comparison. They don't get Obsec, and I guess their main advantage is that they can do other actions, where Poxwalkers can only do that Spread the Sickness one. Generally for Death Guard troops, I'd be trying to max out Poxwalkers, and maybe think of Plague Marines if I had a special plan for them. Moving on to the Thousand Suns, and I think for once Games Workshop has actually managed to make the Chaos Space Marines into a decent unit that you want to take, and they actually do seem to be seeing as much or more play than the Zangors and Cultists as a core unit to build an army around. For 21 points, much like the Plague Marines, they have really quite solid durability. Their Invul save, all those Dust and Fearless will really keep them around, and with their Obsec they can be a problem to scrape off objectives. They can deliver a decent bit of reasonable AP shooting, potentially buffed up by certain Thousand Suns, Tricks and Psychic Powers and Stratagems, and I think both the Soul Reaper Cannon and the Warp Flamers are interesting upgrades, particularly if you have a way to deliver the Warp Flamers into battle, perhaps jumping them around the table with the Cult of Duplicity Psychic Power. I think the main thing that really takes them to the next level, though, is having basically a fully-fledged Psyker within their ranks. The Aspiring Sorcerer can easily just smite to add more damage, or use the Cult Power, or whichever power he's happened to choose, and it's quite cool having that literally built into every single troops unit. They also work well with Thousand Suns Rhinos, too. Perhaps some of the best Rhinos in the game, with their 5 plus invul and high AP Combi Bolter shots. Otherwise, I do still think that Zangors and Cultists have a role, though maybe actually put into a bit more of their traditional supporting role rather than carrying the army. Zangors can be obsec and still provide a bit of cheap melee threat. They are decently more durable than Cultists per model at least, with Toughness 4 and a 5 plus invul to keep them safe, and they're still cheap enough to be relatively expendable infantry. I think the Cultists are still an interesting option too. If literally all you want is a cheap unit to sit around on objectives and doing actions, then for 50 points I still think you're going to get some good value out of them. Moving on, we've reached Xenos now, and we'll start out with the Craftworld Eldar. For the Craftworlds, I have to say, I don't think that any of their troops are really all that outstanding. I've seen quite a few Craftworld lists that just completely ignore troops altogether, focusing on the elite or heavy detachments, as I kind of feel that the Craftworld troops struggle to do what troops would normally do in being fairly durable units to hold objectives. Perhaps the most interesting might be the Guardian Defenders, who with a bit of investment can do some decent damage out of Deep Strike, It'll allow them to get those shuriken catapults in range, and with a couple of psychic buffs, they really can punch above their weight. They then can be pretty resistant to enemy return fire with a pop-up 4 plus invorse for a stratagem, though even then I think that only just gets them into sort of reasonable durability, and still not massively outstanding. Otherwise, Dire Avengers and Storm Guardians are two flavours of cheap units that can just be there to do objectives, actions and screening, and range is a fairly interesting for 65 points for a small unit, they can innately deep strike, again good for actions and things, and though their actual sniper rifle profiles aren't really all that threatening, they can actually punch up a fair bit if you do manage to land Doom on an enemy character, giving you far more chance of getting those sixes for mortal wounds. I must say though, having troops that are fairly underwhelming really doesn't do craft worlds all that many favours. For Harlequins, picking the best troop choice is easy because there is exactly one, though fortunately their Harlequin troops are a very good one perhaps a little bit pricey for their profile at 14 points each, but in the context of Rising Crescendo, with their crazy mobility and flexibility, good transports and decent war gear, they can really punch above their raw stats, as they can usually dictate the terms of the fights that they're getting into. Typically most people want the vast majority of their troops mounted in Skyweavers, though they can be a bit of flexibility, Soaring Spike can be very nice with their fusion pistols, getting very close very quickly for a big melter punch, or if you're playing Frozen Stars, melee weapons might be a bit better, to actually give them the tools to clear off some enemy units in close combat. They also have a really annoying stratagem to keep foes in melee after they've fallen back, and that could certainly catch an unprepared general out. They're certainly a solid enough unit, which they kind of need to be, in a codex with quite so few options. Next up, we have the dreaded Drakari, who have recently seen a small points increase to their witches. They went up to 12 points from 10 in the recent balance data slate. Previously to that, I thought that all three of their troops were very, very usable, and I'd still say that that's the case, though previously I might have said that Witches and Racks were slightly ahead, 
I'd say that Rax might now be the best troops choice that Drakari have to offer. Really though, I think a lot of people will still be running a mix of the three, making the best out of the three facets of Drakari and three different patrols. The witches, even at their new increased points cost, are always going to be useful. Their threat range is absolutely enormous, can bury light infantry under a ton of attacks, and be annoyingly hard to shift in combat with their inball saves and stop enemy fighting back. Rax are really nice cheap melee chaff, excellent for jumping out of things and taking objectives. Again, bullying light infantry, though not quite on the same level as witches, and can actually still have some really quite interesting ranged options with things like dark technomancers. It doesn't work with liquefiers anymore post FAQ, but it can still be surprisingly punchy on things like ossifactors or hex rifles. Finally, I might have said that Kabbalite warriors perhaps were a little behind, but now that witches have taken a fairly hefty nerf, I'd say they're pretty much even again. Cheap gunboat fire support with a bit of splinter fire can easily pack things like dark lances and blasters to add a bit more dark light fire to the things that the raiders and ravagers can put out. They're not too bad on the objectives with their 4 plus armour, and though Trueborn did go up a little bit, I still think they're a really interesting option for flying around hitting with those dark light weapons on twos. I have a feeling that they're all still going to see good play. Next we come to the Tyranids, who despite perhaps not being the strongest army in 9th edition, I think their troop section is really quite popular, and despite having 5 different troops, I think that they're all very usable in their own roles. With the latest Leviathan and Synaptic Link buffs, Tyranids are looking a bit brighter than they were before. If I had to pick a favourite, maybe the single most auto-include unit seems to be a small unit of Tyranid Warriors, 51 points base with a Synaptic Link to give the plus 1 to hit. I feel that at the very least that's going to be a staple of every single Tyranid list right now. Three somewhat durable cheap troops that put out a great buff, what's not to like for just less than 70 points. Otherwise though, gene stealers are still the murderous blender missiles that they've ever been. Truly enormous threat range with things like swarm lords for double moves and can cross half the board in a single turn. Good receivers of some of the various synaptic links and leviathan buffs, I have a feeling that they're still going to see solid play. Turbigants have two very good battlefield roles, either being just very cheap objective securing chaff for 50 points, or going for being a much more big hitting firepower bomb armed with devourers. They could easily be popping up in the wake of a Lictor or a Trigon and unleashing somewhere between 90 and 180 shots, depending on whether you can spare that double shoot stratagem away from the hive guard. Rippers are a lovely little nuisance unit just for 12 points each. Innate deep strike means they can get places that your opponent doesn't want them, and a decent amount of wounds means they can often tie up an objective for a turn with obsec. Tyranid warriors we've already mentioned, great with the synaptic link, can be potentially interesting in big squads with some adaptive physiology as well, particularly maybe with some of the new Leviathan command buffs. Finally, I'd say if I had to rate one choice maybe a tiny bit lower, I think that Hormigaunts perhaps struggle for a roll just a little bit more. No AP makes their melee attacks not quite as threatening, but if you do just want melee swarms of little guys for 6 points each, they really do get to the objectives quite quickly, and their bounding leaps in close combat can get them a lot more movement than you might expect. I'd say perhaps a tiny bit more niche, they're still the right choice in some battlefield roles. For their mutated progeny, the Gene Stealer Colts, my favourite troops choice are the Acolyte Hybrids for 8 points each, which just seem like perhaps the best unit to make use of their very nice Colt Ambush rules and their various buffs for close combat. You can spam quite a lot of them, and they're not really competing too well with Aberrants, which are quite points intensive these days, and it means that they're one of the best choices for hitting very very hard out of Deep Strike Reserve. They're very nice with the stratagems to allow them to get a much more reliable charge or pop up very close to the enemy and blaze them away with hand flamers. The unit can be made even more dangerous with the addition of heavy rock weapons such as saws, cutters or drills. You can reroll ones to hit in melee innately with their icon and you can even go for a bit more of a multiple small units and transport approach with goliath trucks delivering 10 of them into the fray. They just feel like the archetypical units that Gene Stiller Court are usually going to want to build around as primary damage dealers. Otherwise, for cheaper objective holding things, Neophytes and Bruth Brothers both cost 6 points. Usually I'd say the Neophytes are going to be the ones to look at first, they do actually get cult creeds and synergies within the codex, and the mining laser seems like quite a decent choice for some cheap ranged damage. Brood Brothers, I'd say for the most part, are inferior. I'd say perhaps their main advantage is being able to take the cheap cult chimeras. Next up we have the Tau, certainly struggling a fair bit in 40k right now, and desperately awaiting their new codex. Perhaps the most popular troops for them at the moment are the Breacher teams for 9 points each in Devilfish. They seem to synergize well with the Farsight Enclave style of play, which seems to be the one that's most preferred by tournament lists. You do have to get quite close range with them for their maximal damage output, but strength 6 and decent AP is very nice out of a cheap troop like this. 
and they have a couple of different options for one command points to reroll wound rolls. I don't think they're the sort of thing that you go overboard on, but a couple of units for some obsec and to fill the detachment rolls seems good. Otherwise, my second favourite are the Crook Carnivores for 6 points each. Nice cheap expendable chaff, maybe their main advantage getting the pre-game move to screen out the enemy. The damage output really isn't too bad for a 6 point model, a bit of strength for melee and range, but they really are very fragile indeed, only being toughness 3 with a 6 plus save, so they don't stand up at all well to enemy retaliation. Finally, I think that strike teams with their pulse rivals are a bit outclassed in 9th right now. Single strength 5 shots up to 30 inch range just really aren't all that exciting, certainly when you compare them to things like the Admech troops that are sorely in need of a boost. Next up we come to the Necrons, and again between Warriors and Immortals I feel like they're quite well balanced. Out of personal preference I might slightly give best troops to the Warriors, though I think it's perfectly reasonable to use either. The Warriors have a far better potential damage output with their close range Gauss Reaper, and being able to take truly massive units of them works well with quite a lot of Necron synergies, reanimation protocols, chronomancer durability, veil of darkness, or various other things like my will be done or resurrection orbs. I think a few meaty blocks of these is usually going to be a decent choice as a troops unit, fairly durable, fairly threatening, and have the potential to use ghost arcs to good effect as well to get on midfield objectives. As I said though, I do think immortals are pretty good too. Depending on the type of firepower, they really are quite similar in terms of damage and durability with the warriors overall. The immortals being a fair bit better at long range, but not as strong as Gauss Reapers up close. Immortals maybe seem a bit better suited to things like objective camping, being really quite nice and light cover with their better saves. Another advantage is that you can field them in quite small units, so you don't need to commit a massive 130 points to one roll when 85 points might do. Finally, last but not least, we come to the Orcs, where unlike in 8th edition, troops really don't seem to be the main focus of the army right now. I don't think their choices are particularly bad, but just struggle to compete with the other very good Orc data sheets. I'd say perhaps my single favourite use of the troop slot is potentially to use truck boys as a specialist mob. You lose your clan culture for the privilege, but you get to put them in a truck, and they get the very unusual ability to disembark after the truck has moved, and then also move normally and charge. It gives them an absolutely enormous threat range, and they could very very easily be getting a first turn charge off into the enemy deployment zone. Otherwise, just generally, they do do pretty decent damage in combat with their AP-1 choppers. They're harder to shift with their toughness 5, but compared with the previous edition of the Codex, Green Tide just isn't anywhere near as nice to run. Morale can actually be quite punishing for Orcs now, and there's far less stratagem support for these big mobs. Multiple small units of 10 seems to be the way to run boys now. Otherwise, Gretchen, I think, are overpriced for the stat line that you get, though actually perfectly usable in context of the Codex. Sometimes all you might want is the cheapest troops choice, 5 points per model allows them to sit around on objectives, and despite not really being much of a threat to anything, they can still potentially be the ones to win games by sitting around doing boring stuff while the orcs go off to get stuck in. Grot Shields is potentially interesting for orc infantry units as well, though it is pretty pricey for the 2 CP, and also having to invest a fair few points in underwhelming grots. They can also get horrible gits as well, the specialist mob that gives them obsec, that one seems a very reasonable one to pick up if you are using grots and you aren't using any other specialist mobs. Finally, the third and new troops choice are the Beast Snagger Boys, 11 points to a couple of points over the regular Orcs. I did do a comparison video on them previously, so feel free to give that a search. Overall, I feel that they are a decent balance between extra damage and durability, and pretty comparable to regular boys on a point-for-point -point basis. The extra 2 points gives you plus 1 strength, a 6 plus invul, a buff versus monsters, and access to a few very handy strats, including the one to only be wounded on a 4+. Perhaps one particularly interesting thing about them is that they can ride in kill rigs as well. They're very strong indeed right now of course, and having a bunch of angry boys pop out of it when you get close could be a big headache for the opponent to deal with. So overall, loads of really solid troops, most armies tend to have at least something fairly useful, though I'd certainly say that some choices seem better than others. Certainly before the recent points nerfs, I would rank the Skitari and Drakari troops as some of the top. It's going to be interesting to see whether they're still played quite as much now that they're a bit more expensive. I still feel like ranges and racks are very good indeed. I do think we might see a few less witches though. Otherwise, just for the raw points for what you get, Grey Knight Strike Squads just seem excellent all-rounders. Death Guard Pox Walkers are amazing chaff with massive mortal wound punch. I like Thousand Sons with how durable they are, plus getting a mini cycle within the squad. I still think that Necron Warriors are a really solid asset to the faction. Truly annoying to shift when they have their buffs on them, and really go into their style of play of just slowly grinding the enemy down. So anyway, as always, let me know what you think down in the comments below.
Would you agree with how I've assessed the troops, or have I overestimated or underestimated any choices? As always, I look forward to hearing your thoughts. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics, or I'll certainly keep these regular 40k ones coming. I usually have new ones out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the content on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page, and that's how I can afford to spend quite so much time making videos about model soldiers. If you are enjoying a lot, and any support is enormously appreciated, it is what allows these videos to keep on coming. I do try and give some decent rewards to channel Patreons, seeing certain videos early each week, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.